Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. If you've been following along with the progress of my necklace, you'll know I was preparing um, some of the thicker threads uh, to do some stump work stitching. Um, so I had a, like a thicker woolen sort of tapestry uh, colour that I was using underneath and you can still see that um, underneath there that I'm stitching over the top of. So now I'm going in with some finer threads uh, to give it some depth to make it look um, finished, more finished I guess than the wool. So a lot of the thread that I had underneath was that tapestry wool to add some dimension. I actually don't mind the look of that um, even as a finished product to be honest it's a little different. Um, I know though it can look a lot nicer and um, you know certainly it's more traditional to cover the wool up completely uh, with the finer sort of silk threads and um, embroidery threads and so forth. I'm using, like I said, um, uh, Goodman and Scan Silk are the two main brands that I'm using. Uh, I'm using a range of different colours. I might put it in the description box, um, otherwise, you know, it's really going to depend on your project what colours you're going to want. Um, the ones that I'm using here, I uh, had a look and most of them are actually a polyester one. Um, the Goodman ones are polyester, they're a little thicker. Um, I believe there's a, a range of different thicknesses with the Goodman ones and I wanted some sort of thicker threads. The Scan Silk ones were thinner. Uh, this is actually the first time I've used them for hand embroidery. I bought them actually for my sewing machine to use some of the fun like craft stitches and stuff on there um, and I did pick up a couple more colors and things for this project but um, all um, golden bronzy tones um, some browns and things as well So this is the first time I'm doing stump work, so I'm absolutely not an expert in any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the way I went about it was just to think of it like um, a sketch, I guess, and you know, so to really think about the direction of the stitches. Um, and you know, there's nothing um, fancy about the stitches that I'm doing on here. They're just a normal sort of um, straight stitch that I'm doing you know um, I know that there are different techniques that you can certainly do with embroidery stitches but for this for my purposes um, I'm really not needing anything um, that's a patterned stitch or anything like that I really it really is color and overlapping that color and adding the depth and detail and so forth um, so uh, the yeah the stitches are all like a back stitch um, and it did take a long time to work up the stitches so that I got a really nice um, coverage so just bear in mind like when you first start out it might not look like much until you start to really build up those stitches I mostly used uh, a picture as a reference to work out where the shaded light was for this. Um, so I probably would recommend doing that. You could possibly even like uh, add some color underneath, you know, if you've got fabric paint or whatever, just to give yourself um, some guidelines, I guess, you know, so almost sketching it out uh, before you actually stitch over it.
actually didn't use any metallic threads in this. I, I thought I was going to, and you know me, I love anything sparkly, so the fact that I managed not to use something sparkly in this I think is pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> I looked at it and sort of thought, I kind of want that depth of colour um, and it to look like a dirty bronze. So I thought if I use gold in there, then it's not going to quite look right. And a lot of the um, threads that I've got have a little bit of a sheen to them anyway. So they've um, got just enough of a, a sheen to make them look almost metallic without being one of the actual metallic threads. So I'm pretty happy with the colours, how they turned out actually. The only thing is though, if you have a look at this, I mean it's more like the world is swallowing the bird rather than the bird is swallowing the world. Um, <laughs> or it's regurgitating the world, it's, um, uh, it's way too raised, but you know, at this point in time I couldn't backtrack, I had to just go with it, So, which is what I did. So as I mentioned, I thought of it like a sketch, um, you know, if you uh, do sketch work or even just have a look at a sketch and you have a look at the, um, you know, how people crosshatch something or how the lines might shift where different shading is and things like that. That's sort of how I approached this, it was just thinking about, you know, what direction do I want the colour, you know, if I was... Um, sketching this with lines and so forth how would I have that look because you're going to see the stitch lines to a degree it's going to have a direction so you can't just go all over the shop with it because it, it's not going to look good um, so you do need to think about that before you kind of go in And then it was making it angry. Make that eye angry. <laughs> Add some lines in and make that eye look angry. <laughs> now, if you have a look at the picture of the scepter, it has these little um, curls. I don't know whether they're meant to be feathers or what, but they sort of curl off from near the beak, like under the eye. And then there's these like almost feather-like shapes on there as well. So uh, I wanted to stitch in some of these curls and shapes that were moving, um, like sloping away from the eye and down the segments. I gotta say I'm loving these techniques um, this is the first time like I said that I've done uh, stump work first time I've done uh, dry felting and I really love the versatility of both of them I think this will be the start of me using this in um, upcoming projects and things as well I, I really think it's a great combination with um, beadwork it gives you some new technique and scope It's very time consuming though, um, much more time consuming than beadwork because, you know, beadwork, um, you don't need to sort of go over the same area as much as you do with stitching to build it up. So just bear that in mind, but you know, if you want that um, embroidered look, it looks great, I think. So I really do think it's worth it.
course, I'm a crazy woman who beads massive art pieces in front of the TV, so I might not be the right frame of reference. You guys might be sitting there going, screw that, uh, give me the beadwork, or better yet, I'll string some beads onto um, a piece of fishing line. Thanks very much. But if you're a crazy bead lady like me, you might want to try this. So that highlight color is almost like a, a yellow, like a golden yellow. Um, and, you know, I've got those dirty um, greeny brown colors that I've been using and then a little bit of dark brown as well. Um, I actually wish I had some more dark browns and things. I have a, only a very small selection of these um, threads and I think I'll definitely expand on my colors because, yeah, like I said, I, I just really enjoy this style of um, stitch work. So it would be great to get more colors that I can use. So once I had that head really defined and the stitching done and so forth, I knew where the edge was going to be. So I could then finish off that um, uh, line of size 15 beads that I was doing around the head. So I went ahead and did that. A lot of times with these pieces, I'll just do what I, um, I'm sure of so that I can work out what I'm not sure of in the meantime. Uh, pretty much that's going to be this video. Um, I didn't want to make it too long, so I hope you're enjoying this series. And hit subscribe if you want to see how this goes. Um, and I'll see the rest of you next time in Feywood. Bye, guys. Bye.